Hello and welcome back to part six of Making a Viking Longship. On the agenda today, I'm going to be forging out the oars and the rudder. I forged out one of the oars. You can see it's a really simple shape that I'm going for. But looking again, looking at the historical, uh, the you know the actual oars that the Vikings used to use, they are just this simple shape. So all I've done is put a slight taper on it, a piece of six mil round. This is a slight taper, and then flatten the end. And I've done it on a nice long, long bit of bar so I can flip it around and forge another one on the other end and then split them so I get two. And this way it means that I can hold it in my hand rather than cutting one to length and having to hold it in a pair of tongs. You're always, always going to be more accurate and have more control if you're holding it in your hand um, forging on the end of the bar rather than holding it in, in a pair of tongs. Anyway, I'll get this in the fire and show you how I forge this up. So I've got this mark on the anvil and I'll eyeball it and then section that material over the far edge of the anvil and I'll forge over four sides so we get a nice uh, isolation point there and then draw down a taper, work it to octagon and then to round. And then I can just clean up the transition there on the near edge of the anvil. So we've got a nice round transition all the way along this taper and then reverse taper. Now I'll flatten this and spread it with a cross beam. Make sure to flip it in between your cross beam, uh, forging with the cross beam so we get an even spread on both sides. Otherwise, you can, the, the anvil acts as a heat sink, and so you'll just be spreading it on the top, which you don't want to do. You want to flip it so you get a nice even spread. Otherwise, you can get overlaps on the edges. So it's not quite a one heat wonder, but it, it doesn't take very long to forge these out. I've got 26 to make, so there's gonna be quite a bit of forging, but it shouldn't take too long. Each one really should only take two heats. Um, so let's just get, get stuck in. So that is a lot of oars. So I've done 26. Took, did take too long to be honest. I thought it was gonna take longer, but they're all pretty even, you know, if we match them up, they're, they're pretty good. Um, but we can set these aside for now and until the assembly of the ship. I can now move on to making the rudder for the ship. The rudder as well just has a, a nice simple shape. It shouldn't take me too long to forge out. I'll put in an isolation down to a, a round taper and then this does want a bit of a bevel on both sides and then I'll, I'll cut it off from this bar. 
It does want to be riveted onto the ship as well, but I think I'll leave that until I've got the shields and everything ready and do sort of all of the assembly together once I've got all the parts. I'll come on the near edge to make this isolation. I'll take about a cubing material. I don't think it wants to be that long, really. Looking at some of the more historically accurate rudders, they're often narrower at the top here and then wider towards the bottom. So for, as I need to forge a reverse taper coming back here, and then they do have a bevel on both sides. So I need to put a bevel. And it may be that I need to come back with a grinder and just neaten, neaten the profile up. I don't know, we'll see how well I can I can forge this out. And then obviously I need to cut it off of this, this uh, handable length here. I'm going to drill holes all along here so we can then slide the oars in and that's going to be in between the shields. So I'm going to wait until I've got the shields to put the oars in and I'm going to do the same with the rudder and the rudder goes on the back right of the ship so that's here and I'm going to rivet it on, rivet it on through this uh, top bar again. So there should only be one more video on the ship. And that is basically just going to be me putting it all together. So once I've got all the shields in from you, from all of you nice people who are making, making me some shields, I can then rivet those on, drill the holes for the oars, slide all the oars in. And the oars, I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to fix them, whether I am literally just going to slide them in and let them uh, fall. And that's how they're going to, going to stay in the hole or rivet a little stop her on once they're in the hole. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. Um, but yeah, get the shields on, oars in, uh, the rudder riveted on, the deck riveted on, the sail riveted through the, uh, the mast, sorry, riveted onto the deck. So lots of just assembly stuff, but we'll do all that. Hopefully I'll get it all done in one final video, but that's gonna be in quite a while once I've got all the shields. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that you're all busy making your own shields. As I said, I've got to wait now until you've all made the shields and sent them to me in the post, and then I'll do this one final video on putting it all together, but that's probably gonna be in a few weeks. The deadline, a quick reminder for the shields, is the 13th of April, so make sure you get them to me by then. I can then film this video, this final video, and get it get it out to you so you can see it the final piece i'm really excited for this to actually finally get this ship completely done the next thing that i'm going to do in between this final viking longship uh, video is going to be making a short series on a fireside set so forging a poker shovel tongs and a brush um, and then a stand as well for it all to go on so you've got those videos to come and then hopefully the final viking longship video after that